Hey guys, I'm Christy and welcome back to Photoshop Icebreakers. Today I'm going to show you how we can turn one product mock-up into four different variations in a snap using the powerful generative fill in Photoshop. Creating content right before your eyes. Let's jump into it. Our first technique, we can transform product photography into beautiful on-brand flat lays. I call this a getting that Pinterest look. Start by creating a square artboard at 180 by 180 with a resolution of 300 so we could use the image for other marketing collateral. Click Generate Image and enter your prompt. I've prompted orange paper texture flat top view with top view being the key prompt to allow for the bird's eye view. Once we click Generate, find the best solution. I liked the third, however, I just wanted to remove the objects in the space. Using the lasso tool, select the space around the objects, leave the prompt blank and click Generate. Watch as the objects are removed. We now want to merge these two layers together to tidy up the layers panel. Now for the real good stuff. Drop in your product and position it in the center. We're then going to start by adding our surrounding objects. Using the last two tool again, circle the space you'd like an object and type your prompt. In this case, I wanted slices of oranges everywhere to really make the customers thirsty for the drink and find your best solution. Repeat those steps to add more objects. We want to make sure the can looks like it's in the setting, so hold Command plus click your can layer to select this shape. And then remove some of the selection so you only have the small surrounding space around the can selected. Leave the prompt blank to let Photoshop generate the image. In this case, it didn't generate what I was hoping for, so I added the prompt shadow to create an in situ shadow. And keep generating until you find the best result. We're then going to continue adding objects to the scene. Continue adding objects with top view as the prompt to ensure we result in the bird's eye view look. You can see I had some fun here adding an ice cold drink too. And here's the final result. Our second technique, creating unique product photography with textures. I call this fake it till you make it. Start again by clicking generate image. This time we want to add some kind of texture behind the product. So in this case, we're going for ice. I've prompted with sparkling soda water texture, full image ice top view. Make sure photo is selected and click generate. Continue to generate until you found your image. I went through a few rounds of generated images until I found my preferred result. I really liked this one, but I wanted to extend the image. So I opened up the crop and generated more of the same image. I then wanted to turn the lemon into an orange. So I adjusted the saturation to be more orange. Voila, look at that result. I then added more oranges around the image with prompting in objects. And then using the same technique as we did in the first concept, drop in your product, position it in the center, and then we're going to select the surrounding space around the can, leave the prompt blank and click generate to allow Photoshop to merge the can and the ice seamlessly together. We're then gonna make some finishing touches by overlaying more ice onto the can. And we're done. Here is the result. Our third technique, creating in situ mock-ups. Again, click generate image and start your prompt. In this case, I'm prompting with a detailed description of an in situ scene, making sure I describe the type of background and props that I'd like in my shot making sure that I have the content type set to photo before I click generate. After finding the right image, I wanted to expand on it. So I made the crop bigger and generated the surrounding space to make sure that space is filled with the style of image that I'm hoping for. Think of your prompts like layers to your image. You can keep adding to it until it's perfect. Just like in this case where I wanted more of that rock foundation going to the left. I continued to work on my image, adding objects and layering prompts to get the effect I was aiming for, making sure we can fit the objects seamlessly into our image by selecting the surrounding space, leaving the prompt blank and clicking generate. And we're ready for that final result. And lastly, a personal favorite, flying objects. I call this the UFO aesthetic. Lastly, we're going to start with prompting an idea for the surrounding background. In this case, I opted for an orange studio background effect, making sure I have photo selected and click generate. But I found this image in the middle and I really like the scene. 
to remove these objects by selecting them and leaving the prompt blank. Again, until I find that right image, follow the same process. Select, leave the prompt blank and click generate until you have your best result. Once again, we're going to drop in our can and position it in place. And in this case, I wanted to make sure that water effect was really going around the outside of the can. We're going to then select the surrounding space and click generate, leaving the prompt blank for that really nice seamless finish to the image. For this image, I felt like the horizon line was too high up for where the can was, so I wanted to drop that a bit. So we selected that background image, dropped the horizon line, and then once again, like laying your image in Photoshop, we're gonna layer our prompts. We're gonna select those blank prompts, leave the prompt blank, click generate, and Photoshop will seamlessly finish the image. And just like we have with all of the other techniques, we're then gonna layer our effects over the top. Using the lasso tool, we're gonna to select our space and type in oranges, for example, and then flying at the end of it to get this really cool flying, I call it UFO effect. We're gonna then continue adding objects using that same prompt with flying at the end for a really cool effect. And the final result, I mean, that's pretty awesome. I hope you all enjoyed this Photoshop icebreaker session. I'd love to know what you guys do with these tools and create dozens of variations in a snap.